1963, John F. Kennedy challenged this nation to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Six years later, we did just that. This is the computer that NASA used to do what some thought was an impossible dream. This is my iPhone 6. This smartphone has one million times the computing power than that computer. So my message to you today is if that computer can take three men on a journey to the moon and back, then this smartphone can, can help every man, woman, and child on this earth on a journey to better health. So why is a middle-class kid from the shores of Lake Erie, whose first name happens to be Ted, standing here before you giving a TED Talk? Well, some would say that my claim to fame is that for 11 years, I ran the fitness center at the White House. You see, as an exercise scientist, I wanted to find any way possible to help my clients on their journey to health. Back then, we used paper to track workouts. Today, we can use a smartphone to track all sorts of things like steps, sleep, blood pressure, and heart rate. So now, I'm an academic and a researcher at Point Loma University, and also at Canyon Ranch Institute. I now take all the big data that's being collected by these devices, these apps and these wearables, and try to find a way to make sense of it all so that fitness professionals and health coaches can help their clients towards better health. My PhD research has collected millions of tweets of people sharing their physical activities online. With this great amount of big data coming from apps and wearables, we can now take a deeper dive into how, where, when, and in some cases why people are being physically active. If you look up the word disruption in Webster's, it says this, to cause something to be unable to continue in the normal way, to interrupt normal progress or activity. Disruption changes how we think, how we behave, how we learn, and how we go about our daily lives. Technology has disrupted the music industry. Technology has disrupted the phone industry. Technology has disrupted the banking industry. It's now time for technology to disrupt the health industry. But not like that. By the way, this is in Point Loma. Yeah. <laughs> so why is it important for us to disrupt health? Because in our nation, over half of adults live and suffer with one or more of these chronic conditions. Asthma, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. And guess what? It's very expensive. For every dollar that we spend on health care in this nation, 86 cents goes towards treating those chronic conditions. Seven out of every 10 deaths in our country can be linked back to those chronic conditions. Being disruptive in the health industry can help. 
Let's take a look at some of the interesting statistics when it comes to health and mobile phones. So at any given time on this earth, there are more users of mobile phones than there are users of toothbrushes. We keep our smartphones within arm's reach 91% of the time. Raise your hand if this is you. There are more users of fitness apps than there are members of health clubs in the United States. And 73% of users say they are healthier today because of the use of their app. So, let me tell you a little story. January 2006. My mother had been suffering from a rare form of cancer for many years. So my family, my dad, my five siblings, their spouses, all met at Shadyside Hospital in Pittsburgh to visit mom. Mom wanted one last time to see each one of her kids. So being the oldest, I went first. I walked into the room, sat on the bed. Mom took my hand, and she said, I'm so proud of what you've done in your life, but you work too hard. Mom died two days later. And on my eight-hour drive back to Washington, I decided Mom was right. And it was time for me to live my bucket list. So a few months later, I sold everything that I owned. I moved to Ireland, where I didn't know anybody. And I earned a master's degree in international business. And then started my PhD on two of my passions, physical activity and technology. When it was time to move back to the States, I chose San Diego. A little different weather, Ireland, San Diego. You get the point. But it was here that I was able to continue my passion and my research. And in January of 2014, I reconnected over Twitter with this man, Dr. Richard Carmona, my old workout buddy from the White House, who was then our 17th Surgeon General under George W. Bush. After a distinguished career as Surgeon General, Dr. Carmona moved back to Arizona, where he continued his passion to help people live healthier lives. As the chairman of the board for the nonprofit Canyon Ranch Institute, with a mission to catalyze the possibility of optimal health for all people, to help educate, inspire, and empower every person to prevent disease and embrace a life of wellness. Dr. Carmona invited me to Tucson to give a presentation on my academic research. Now, this was a talk that I had given many, many times before. How we can use technology in healthcare to decrease corporate healthcare costs. But something was different this time. After my talk, the staff gathered around and began asking questions. Can we use this same technology with low-income communities? A family of four living on less than $15,000 a year. So by the end of my stay, I decided to become the senior advisor for disruptive health technologies at the Canyon Ranch Institute. And instead of selling my services to corporations, I now find ways to give it away to low-end communities, those that need it most. So if you look at the type of person that I worked with in Washington, they all had a sense of stability, economic stability, good paying job, enough money to go anywhere to eat, join a gym, hire a personal trainer, even 
treat themselves to a weekly massage. Now let's compare that with a low-income member. Good-paying jobs are hard to find. It's a constant struggle to pay rent, transportation, let alone health care, belonging to a gym, hiring a personal trainer, or that massage. But the one thing that both of these groups have is that mobile phone. And what a powerful tool that phone can be when it comes to disrupting health. So when I first started working with the Institute, I thought there was no way we could use mobile phones to impact the lives of low-income communities. But I was wrong. The Pew Institute did some research that suggests over 80% of those living below the poverty line own a mobile device. Our own internal research suggests that that could be upwards of 96%. So one of our partner sites is in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Pittsfield is a, was once a booming blue-collar factory town. Many in Pittsfield now struggle. I'd like to share with you a success story of how we are taking the world of wireless into wellness. One of our participants, I'll call her Ruth, is in her mid-40s, has two young children, and works two part-time jobs to make ends meet. So one day, between jobs, Ruth went to the local Big Y grocery store with the goal of finding something healthy to eat. She had only $5 in her pocket. And in class the week before, she learned of this health app called Fujicate, which allows you to scan the barcode and it gives you a health grade of that food. So in the middle of the store, Ruth pulled out her smartphone and she began scanning and scanning and scanning until she found something that was healthy that she could eat for under $5. She was proud. She was proud that she now had the power to make a healthy choice. She was proud that she was able to take what she had learned the week before and live a healthier life. She was proud that she found a new sense of security. On the way out of the store, Ruth texted one of her new friends from class to share what had happened. Now, we all want that feeling of accomplishment, so by the time class happened the next week, Ruth stood before the class and shared her success. Perhaps for the first time in her life, she was a woman of power. The same power my clients in Washington have. By us introducing her to that one simple health app, she changed her outlook on life. There are countless other stories just waiting to be told. We need to listen. We need to explore. We need to find ways to live healthier lives through technology. We need to create my generation's man to the moon. Dr. Carmona often says that your health care should not be dictated by your zip code. With disruptive health technologies, we can help make that dream come true. I invite you on that mission. <laughs>